Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Container Corporation of India Limited Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Dam Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advisors Limited. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Q2 FI23 earnings call of Container Corporation. I have with us uh, today the management, uh, Mr. V. Kalyana Rama, Chairman and Managing Director. I'll hand over the floor to him for his opening remarks, and post which we can open up the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bhumika. And good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, so we are happy to come out with, uh, again, a good financial results. Uh, I am now today having with me my Director Operations, Mr. Sanjay Surup, and uh, Director of Finance, Mr. Manoj Zube, with me. So overall, uh, the, the growth is uh, good. Domestic, we are doing very well. In fact, the domestic growth of 30% plus we are able to maintain, and that is because of the new products what we launched. They are giving us uh, good uh, uh, headway and also the the, uh, the earlier uh, system improvements what we have taken of introducing high capacity rakes and high capacity containers is really giving us uh, good uh, uh, business from the west coast to east coast and to the south side and also we are able to pick up now volumes on the south side as well. So that's a good scenario. The empty running is coming down, and good circuits are getting built up in domestic. And on the exim side, uh, we had uh, good uh, handling volumes, uh, but overall exim scenario it is subdued uh, because of the, the 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 existing conditions in the world markets and the uh, talked about uh, recession in Western countries and US. But uh, now the global cues, what we are hearing that the inflation is easing up in uh, U.S. and the things are looking up, and there is also the maybe a uh, better scenario on the Ukrainian, Russian, Ukrainian conflict front. So these things may be good in the, the going forward, uh, and the stakeholders uh, with whom we are having discussions are also hopeful to have a better uh, next five months. Uh, so we are keeping our fingers, fingers crossed, particularly on the exam side, because it's totally dependent on the export-import scenarios. Uh, otherwise, the, the, the guidance given on the revenue side, 10 to 12 percent growth on both top line and bottom line, we are confident of achieving that. Uh, so we, uh, the, the first uh, of the results are in line with that. Uh, achieving the, the top line and bottom line growth and uh, we are able to de declare good dividend for both the quarters as well already we declared 100 percent dividend on the share combined for the q1 and q2 we have come up with uh, good schemes during the quarter uh, there's uh, a new video scheme uh, announced a new round trip scheme announced for DPD containers, and recently we have come up with uh, an additional uh, a scheme wherein uh, empty container movement free with the loaded container on the increased volumes. And all these schemes, uh, we are hopeful that they will give us good volumes as our scheme of empty uh, rebate, what we announced uh, a year back, uh, gave us very good volumes last year and continuously giving us volumes this year as well. Land license fees front, uh, that will be one question every analyst would like to ask for, so let me clarify that. Now it is very, very clarified, the new lease policy is announced, and as for the new lease policy, the land license fee for the 26 terminals which we are operating on Indian Railways land is 6% of the market value of the land. And market value is the industrial price announced by the revenue authorities at their respective place. So there is absolutely no doubt in this. So for this year, we are paying at present at the rate of 380 to 390 crores. In the first half year, we 
they made a payment of uh, around 190 crores as the land license fee. Even though we have given an estimate for the total year, the land license fee will be 450 crores. That additional 60, 70 crores is to watch the adjustments which we may have done because the land rates are adjusted by revenue authorities once in six months. So to cater to these exigencies, we have given, uh, we have taken the, uh, the estimate as 450 crores. So now we are very uh, clear and confident that the land license fee payment for the railway land will be not more than 450 crores. Uh, and the double stack running is very good, uh, and uh, the uh, Katuwas is doing very well, our major hub, and uh, the other hub also started operating, as I mentioned to you in the last quarter itself, and it is also doing very well. Uh, the total number of double stack trains has gone up in the last quarter, uh, and the, but the transit times have come down with the operations of DSC. Even though we are doing double hubbing, the transit times have come down uh, substantially. Uh, they are almost half between the Delhi capital region and the, the NCR and uh, Western Mosul Pradesh, Punjab regions to Mundra and Kutawa. That has, uh, that's helping us in getting good volumes on the way. And also the, the margins, uh, as I mentioned, and the operating margins on the originating uh, basis in this quarter in the exim has gone up. They are, they are better than the last quarter. So this is the, the, the overall brief. Uh, so now I will... Uh, uh, open up the conference for the further question on this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The first question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, sir, just a couple of follow-up questions on uh, land license fee policy. Uh, just uh, added, uh, wanted to get some more information. So is there a provision of escalating this at a certain rate, so like say 6 or 7%, uh, this amount of 450 crore or uh, 390 crore, uh, or every year, depending on what is the price of the land, 6% of that will be recalculated and you will have to pay? So. No, no, at all. It is, it is, it is like this. This escalation is literally clause of the policy. So what CMD spoke about is uh, the value of the land is uh, to be taken on industrial rate on uh, as on 1-4-2020. And based on that, every year 7% escalation is taking place in the existing policy which we are following, right? And what you mentioned is that even if the uh, uh, notification from the land revenue officer for the base rate of the land, even if that monthly, uh, the total payout will not be crossing 450 crore. This is what the uh, company feels, and this is what he told you, right? Okay, sir. Okay, so so I mean, uh, uh, I got that point that the total will not be more than 450, but say, like thinking slightly longer in terms, say, if I take a period of five years. We should be building in seven percent escalation on whatever amount you actually pay this. Absolutely, year. absolutely. In the existing okay. policy that we are following right now. Okay, and sir, uh, uh, the LLF policy which has been approved by the government, there is a provision that existing players can move to say paying 1.5% of price of land from 6%. So is there any plan on the part of Concord to take advantage of that uh, or you will continue to pay 6% uh, as you are paying right now? So the first clarification is 1.5 is not the right uh, substitution. That 1.5 is only the fixed part of what they, are, they have been negotiated in that policy. There is another part that is uh, the, the variable part that is uh, TAC charges traffic access charges. 
So the total will come out of that 1.5 percent fixed plus the TAC charges which railway fixes, and owners lie on railways to revise it as and when they wish to. So that's a very catchy situation right now. The policy details has to come up, and company is looking into it, and we will take a considered call uh, at, at a later date. Okay, but is this understanding right that if you want to move to this 1.5 percent plus TAC, then you will have to go through a competitive bidding process, or you can move right. this 1.5 percent? You are right. You are right. You are right. The only clause is that we, the company has the right of first right of refusal. Okay, so so essentially, you you will have to decide terminal by terminal whether you want to. Okay, move. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. you are right. Okay, sir. Okay, thanks a lot, sir. And sir, just one uh, bookkeeping question: If you could share the originating volumes on exam and domestic front. Yeah, uh, exam. It was uh, for uh, half year. Uh, it was nine six eight four seven eight TU. And domestic two zero seven three nine three TU. Total one one seven five eight seven one TU. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Shah from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Sir, please yeah. go ahead with your question. Yeah, uh, this is Siddharth actually, um, and from actually a pension fund. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask one question regarding uh, you know a November up, uh, sorry September update on ninth of September that uh, you have. Uh, Um, gotten some rating for uh, raising of close to 9000 crores from ikra so if you could uh, share your insight uh, as to are there any plans to raise debt on the books and you know have any further cap expands or something so if you could just throw some light on that uh, we could not get you where from you got you got the information that we are raising that no no so uh, there is a bombay stock exchange filing that uh, uh, that you, you have gotten our double a plus rating for our uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, we got we 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 do take ratings from these agencies because that's only that's a regular process, yearly process. We do the rating and keep them ready. And we have no plans of raising any debt as of now. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Lohari from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah good morning sir thank you for the opportunity uh, sir uh, if you could uh, help us understand in terms of the realization if we see on a handling basis the realizations are down 15% in the exam segment compared to first quarter so if you could help us understand uh, uh, you know what is driving this yeah as uh, uh, pmb has already explained that uh, for uh, uh, doing last mile first mile logistics the volumes uh, uh, that uh, this service we have started a few months back and these volumes have been added which are not very uh, giving very high margins to us but they are a service to our customers that help us to bring more volumes to us so because of this the uh, per tu margin is subdued but otherwise uh, exim uh, has uh, yeah uh, originating is fine And uh, per TU, as the originating impact has uh, is quite high, which is twenty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty per TU, which is more than the first quarter. Okay, so if I if I uh, see the realization uh, on the uh, originating basis, it's showing an increase of seven percent. Yes, yes, yes. If you see the realization, actually you should see on originating basis only. Then it it is uh, showing an increase. Understood. And uh, if you could help us understand, uh, you know, the uh, volume growth of twelve uh, percent uh, on originating basis or eighteen percent on handling basis, um, any particular uh, port uh, sector which is driving this volume growth, and uh, you know, outlook on the same. Well, actually, the originating growth is not. Uh, 18%. The 18% what we reported to the stock exchange is the handling volume growth in it. So, in originating, as I said, the absorbed the transfer is going on on the export import front. So, as of now, its originating volume growth is very less. In fact, I think there is a little contraction in the originating volume, particularly in this quarter. 
Understood. Uh, sir, in terms of the employee cost, if you could clarify, QOQ it is down. Uh, how do we look at the employee cost going forward? Is this a run rate? Which cost is safe. I think there is not any increase, little bit increase, actually. Decrease, decrease. Little bit decrease because of the attrition. Yes, sir. So our employee strength is coming down because we are digitized now completely 98%. Employees, so superannuated so aura, we are not including fresh faces to that, fill up those vacancies. So the employee cost is slightly, some not already near the same level last year. Understood. And sir, uh, if I may ask, just the contribution of the Northwest uh, in the entire exit cargo, would it be... Uh, we don't have that. We don't, we, we don't keep that breakup uh, for this conference call. Uh, got it, sir. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mukesh Saraf from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, in your opening remarks, you had mentioned that the turnaround times have come off significantly. Uh, you know, in, in some cases by half. Uh, so, uh, in your uh, experience, have you seen any shift of uh, market share from road to rail because of this? Um, and have you started offering more and more timetable uh, uh, trains, scheduled trains, now uh, helping that market share grow? Yeah, as the CMD has mentioned in his opening remarks, uh, the uh, response of uh, timetable trains is, has been very good for us, and we have been able to shift uh, sizable uh, road traffic to rail traffic. In fact, uh, we have started a train called Retail Express from Dadri to Mundra via Khatwas, which is a run by Concord in association with Merck, which is a very big hit for the customers, and uh, all light cargo was used to go by road has come to rail. So this is really has been very, very beneficial for our company. And uh, we have been able to shift sizable amount of traffic from road to rail. Uh, and, uh, and now that we have already seen this kind of improvement, uh, is there more scope of this market share to move from road to rail? Uh, or, uh, or do you think that you know, we have already uh, kind of got a substantial portion of, of say, what was uh, possible? Already, a lot of market. Uh, we have seen lot of movement from road to rail. Now, next big shift will come when Dadri also comes on DFC, and DFC goes to Navasheva. Okay. Navasheva comes on DFC. Then we will get a sizable shift from road to rail. So, when is Dadri expected to come on DFC, sir? Anytime. So, as that uh, dedicated red card or management. Sure, sir. Sure. And just one last thing, uh, uh, I think last year uh, you also mentioned that there was a possibility of paying this land license fees up front, say for a 30 year period or for a longer term. Uh, is that still there on the cards or that's not, no longer a possibility? Now that is still, we are waiting as mentioned by my colleague in earlier answer. We are waiting for the policy guidelines to come out from the Ministry of Railways. Still the, the things are we are waiting for that. So as of now, there is no clarity on that, and uh, we are paying uh, every quarter at 6% of the market value. Sure, sure. All right, sir, thank you. Uh, that's it from my side. I'll get back in. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Amit Dekshit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Dixit, the audio is not clear from your line. Please use the handset mode. Uh, is it better now? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so, I have a couple of questions. So the first one is on essentially, you have mentioned that you know the new schemes have been announced and there is like double check trains are going up. So, what kind of margin? Uh, you are not audible. You have to speak clearly into your uh, phone. Otherwise, we are not able to hear you. Just a minute. Am I audible now? Yes. And you are doing the check your audible because when you are asking questions, you are not audible. No, no, no problem. So, uh, the first question is on uh, basically the step that you have taken that are quite common. The new schemes announced, the double stacking going up. Uh, so, what kind of uh, margin improvement can we expect going forward in the next, let us say, one or two years? 
as a result of uh, this. this question i was answering for last i think four five uh, conference calls so the margin where we are operating in the logistics sector is a very good margin so now we are ramp up our volumes and take more share in the market rather than increasing further and further margin the operating at 32% ebitda margin is a very high margin business in the logistics sector that you people understand because you and i is lot of logistics companies this sort of margins are not really sustainable in the logistics sector so i don't see any further quantum jump in the margins we what our uh, endeavor is to maintain the margin at this level all it is back here and there but to increase the volume that we bring more traffic on to way okay uh, the second question is essentially on your market share in delhi and cr region if you can uh, let us know how it has moved and are you seeing that said we don't do that uh, sector wise region wise market share okay no problem i'm just asking and you know some of your competitors some of the private players are setting up icds in the, in the areas you know in, in your catchment particularly murada near muradabad and also how do you see uh, this competition affecting uh, your uh, share over there the competition we are not worried about competition see and uh, the main issue is maintaining margin that's what i explained to you in my earlier answer it we other people are trying to work on very marginal things so because for them it is a the kind of maintaining their business and uh, sort of do and uh, die situations they operate there are counter operates with a healthy margin with a quality of service so we are not worried about this competition coming up and definitely the competition is every day will keep coming up and our main competition as a maintain always is from the road not from other operators road improvement in road and new vehicles and in vehicles the class of vehicles which are coming with more efficiencies so that is going to give a real but this thing happened now is the opening of all the digital fuel corridor where the traffic jams have come down and rail sector is looking up and also the lot of investment is going into indian railway network system that is also helping in easing out the constraints and india rail okay understood sir uh, thanks and all the best The next question is from the line of Deepika Mundra from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. <coughs> Good afternoon. Sorry. Uh, so, on the um, uh, market share front versus road, uh, road, there have been you know significant schemes that you have launched. Could you tell us how the rail coefficient has improved uh, in the past six months versus uh, what it used to be last year? Hey, now, Deepika, actually, uh, we are not maintaining the ICD by the rail coefficient. but we are able to see the market growth in rail by various other parameters we are monitoring like empty running coming down increase in double stacking if we have more volumes then we can have more double stacking as pmd has already mentioned in his opening remark there has been 32% growth in double stacking and all more than 2000 trains already we have handled in first half and we are likely to cross 4000 double stack trains in this year which will be a all time record for the company so all these things clearly point out that more traffic is coming on rail so uh, got it sir uh, and uh, if you have to think about this uh, first mile last mile service that you have started uh, e is is this uh so normally second is this is going to be via road right which is why it is not really adding much to revenue or to margin yeah actually this is a kind of vertical integration that uh, as a logistics company we have to give to our customers uh, we have to give service that is called end logistics up to their premises from our terminals so this we don't look uh, at very high margins on these uh, on this segment and our uh, aim is to give service to our customers so that they become bind to us and they don't go anywhere else they bring all the cargo to us and which in turn we earn in terms of rail freight warehousing other services to our customers this is the kind of service that we are giving to them 
uh, understood sir and sir last question on the llf uh, the new terminals which will be competitively bid for what is going to be the criteria for the bidding what kind of criteria bid sir so for, for uh, the new terminals which will be competitively bid for if the uh, if you are, the you are meaning about the greenfield greenfield terminal the, under the new railway la uh, land policy so 1.5% plus tac uh, the competitive bidding is going to be on the tac charge or the tac charges if it's provided by railways uh, then what is going to be the criteria for uh, winning the bid no i will understand to quote uh, on uh, i mean fixed cost is fixed cost of 1.5 percent so the bidding parameter is perhaps on the uh, tac portion only but the the rider that i mentioned that that this tac portion is not have a clarity about the future today say it is 1.6 lakh per uh, rate tomorrow what rate will be there on the railway side nobody knows so the parameter will be in terms of percentage of the railway rate or 1.6 lakh Uh, as a fixed cost, nobody is aware right now. That is what CMD mentioned. That let the details come out from uh, the railway side on the policy. How to bid? Are you rightly asking the question? We are also asking this question or waiting for the answer. Right, understood, sir. Thank you so much. And if it comes, then we will also be participating for green fuel project. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Asha. from elara capital please go ahead uh, hi sir so a uh, couple of book uh, thank you for the opportunity and couple of book giving question so can you give us the exam lead and the domestic lead for this quarter question yeah exam lead for this half year is uh, <clears throat> 675 km domestic it is 1344 km total is 779 km okay and uh, can you give us the port wise market share So for container port, yeah, JNPT is uh, 36 percent, Mumbra 36.4 percent, Sipawa 11.2 percent, Vijayak 4.3 percent, Chennai 5 percent, Tuti Coin 1.6 percent, Cochin 2.3 percent. These are the main ports. Okay, and uh, the rail coefficient at ports? Rail coefficient at JNPT is 18.2 percent. Mumbai is 26%, Sipawa is 70%. Okay, and last question, sir. Uh, could you just give us uh, throw some light on the uh, agri, uh, the bulk commodity side? So, how are we gaining traction on the agri side and the cement side? If you could just provide some uh, color on it. Agri side. Yeah, the, uh, the agri commodity is that we were planning to launch. I mean, the food grains. And uh, the cement; uh, these were the main two that we were going to focus on the bulk commodities. So you are asking about bulk movement. Yeah, bulk movement. Bulk actually, uh, the food grain we have loaded, and now we are in touch with ITC and FCI. We will getting more orders. Meanwhile, in uh, south, that is at uh, near Vijayawada, there is a place called Jagia Pet where we have conducted trial for bulk cement. KCP Cement is one of the customer. that uh, in this plant we are loading uh, bulk cement in uh, our normal containers using the liner at uh, is factory near jagia pet from there we are taking it to the place called arakonam near chennai and where uh, he, he, that kcp uh, cement has got its site and we have installed a, a unique uh, new equipment and which is useful uh, to uh, deep up the container It is taking 35, 40 minutes to deep up the container, which is a very, very uh, remarkable innovation, I should say. And customer is also very satisfied, and uh, customer will is giving us continuous cargo. Almost all already we have uh, five racks we have handled at Arakonam. Sixth rack is uh, on pipeline. So this is a good progress, and we are uh, getting more uh, queries and more demand for carrying of bulk commodities. In normal containers. Okay, and any uh, volume guidance of uh, any uh, that you want to give for this for uh, this year, or third one degree, and the bulk side. Volume guidance, PMT, whatever he told in the initial at the beginning of financial year, already he has maintained the same guidance, and he has told in the uh, interviews also today morning, same guidance we will maintain. Okay, thank you so much. That's all from my side. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, the first question was uh, that I had was more on the land license, uh, uh, the policy that recently came out. Uh, the question was that if uh, Concord was to go for long-term lease arrangements of more than, let's say, 30, 30 35 years, um, uh, for its existing terminals, uh, will these get rebid or by virtue of Concord holding them today, they pay six per, they pay whatever rate gets decided for 35 years without any competition coming inside? No, that's right. So that option is there. If we choose to uh, go ahead on the same uh, uh, old condition, uh, we are going to have it uh, for uh, next 35 years without any competition. In the new policy also, we can say that choice also is given once the details come, comes out. The only thing, the bidding will take place and uh, we will have first right of refusal in case we are not the highest one. So in either case, one thing is clear that uh, uh, either case, uh, this land of the railway parcel which Concord is having right now, if Concord wishes to continue for next 35 years, there is no hindrance in that. Uh, that clarifies. Uh, the second thing I wanted to clarify was that um, this um, uh, 450 crore land license fee uh, that you are suggesting for FY23, uh, for next year, should we be building 7% growth on this number or on the 350 crore number that you are so, always expect to pay? This was very clearly told by CMD. Understand this thing. What he told is that the maximum that we are interpreting for this year also is 450. A. B. He has mentioned it uh, right in the morning in the uh, TV interviews also that we are this year we are paying on actuals which is for uh, the, uh, H1 is around uh, 185 crore, 190 crore. So we are paying on the actuals. We will keep some provisions if required for any kind of uh, uh, being announced by the land revenue officers in uh, various areas. But in, in any case, what we are emphasizing is it is not going to cross 450 for this year. A. B, as you rightly mentioned, whatever base price that we are paying this year, it is supposed to escalate to 7% if we remain in the old policy. That is settled practice. Um, sure. Um, the last question that I had was, um, um, uh, if you could share with us the quantum of um, uh, 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 first last mile uh, contribution that is there in exam revenues, for us to better assess uh, the per uh, originating volume uh, number uh, in terms of realizations. We can't give realizations on the first mile, last mile to you. No, I, yeah, the aim was to understand for it for the Bain business because uh, as you said, we will not be able to give you. That's not the question. That's not the parameter for an analysis. We already explained you that these are the handling volumes, not the originating volumes, and originating volumes already we have given you what are the originating volumes. Uh, got that. Those are my questions. Uh, thank you for your answers. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Shah from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, can you help us with the empty running cost for both exam and domestic? Yeah, empty running cost for the half year for exam was rupees fifty-two point seven crores. Domestic 133.8 crores, total 186.5 crores. Sure. Uh, and so just one uh, you know, suggestion, if you can please think over it. Uh, since now we are saying that originating is something that we have to be looking at and that is important uh, to look at. So if you can share the originating along with the handling when we disclose the volume of goods. If you can please consider that suggestion. And when should we share it? So when you disclose the volume on the exchanges for the quarter, uh, if along with the handling, you can also share originating, it will be really helpful. We'll look at the There is a federal uh, uh, format there. If you'll see, we'll discuss if uh, that can be shared or not. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I just wanted one follow up question on the originating versus handling. We've seen that handling is now. 2x of originating versus say 1.6x, which is the normal rate. Now we understand that originating is more reflecting port volume and handling is all these new functions that you're kind of introducing. So will this ratio continue to remain in this 2x range because of the new first mile, last mile logistics that steps you're undertaking? Yeah, more or less it will be like this. It will like likely to remain like this only. 
so there is a substantial uh, there will be a substantial increase in handling ratio right going forward yes that's right yeah sure sir that was my question thanks sir. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pulkit patni from goldman sachs asset management please go ahead yeah so it's not asset management it's on the research side and thanks for taking my question uh sir uh, when i'm looking at our originating volumes in this quarter and i look at the last 26 quarter average we've been doing about 5 lakh containers on the exam side every quarter and we are in that range even right now whereas when i look at domestic we were at about 55 to 70000 and now we are doing almost 1 lakh right now since everybody asks you about dedicated freight corridor its benefits etc is it fair to say that whatever we have done so far the benefits are really being only felt in the domestic volumes on the exim side this has no real share gain that we have done you know versus the road sector is that a right understanding or am i am i seeing it differently because the data seems to be suggesting so so uh, i don't think you are uh, you have uh, your conclusion is uh, very correct because domestic we are able to develop new streams so it is clearly reflected in the volumes which is Uh, quite robust, but in exim we are able to divert lot of traffic from road to rail. But uh, as PMD also mentioned in the interview in the morning, we suffered at many places due to the geopolitical reasons and recession uh, in uh, uh, Europe and US, which is slowly receding down down now. So the, uh, the negative growth that we witnessed due to those reasons has been more than compensated by the. shift in traffic from road to rail that is the reason of uh, you are uh, seeing the volume that you are seeing uh so like if even if we have suffered on that count it's to 471 we would have been at 550 i, I understand your point but that still doesn't show that because of dfc there's been any gain in in exim volumes for us on the originating side i mean Uh, i am happy to take it offline but on the basis of data that doesn't show whereas on the domestic side absolutely as you rightly said i think there's a clear doubling of volume almost that we've seen over the last 26 quarters uh, mr pulkit uh, i cannot uh, explain in detail in this conference if you want we can have separate investor meeting then i can answer all your questions in detail sure happy to do that sir thank you so much for taking our time thank you The next question is from the line of Vikram Suryavanshi from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, can you share what is uh, rail freight margin uh, this quarter and outlook on that? Uh, rail freight margin uh, uh, for this uh, uh, half year. Is uh, 26.48%, uh, and the figure that should that you should look at is overall operating margin, which is 32%. As PMD also mentioned in his opening remark, it is quite good for a uh, logistics company. 32% operating margin is quite high. Got it. And uh, if you look at uh, there has been sharp rise in uh, entry running cost, uh, particularly for aging trade. Uh, if you compare to first quarter and this. so what was the reason or any uh, uh, if you can explain something on that i think that will be helpful empty running has slightly increased because uh, there is lot of imbalance in imports exports so that is the basic reason for increase in empty running okay and are we seeing the trend to continue currently or uh, because i think we still i think we are facing the uh, issue regarding the slowdown and all that I, I i feel that uh, uh, it will not be like this we will able to uh, arrest this uh, increase and uh, bring it down got it thank you thank you participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of nimisha from bank of america please go ahead hi thanks for the opportunity Um, my question is on domestic volume growth. Uh, it seems that we are focusing on cement, Roro, and food grains. Uh, is it fair to say that cement will uh, be the bulk of the doubling of uh, volume or revenue that we are talking about over three years? See, first of all, we are not doing any Roro. Okay, 
रोरो वॉल्यूम्स आर नॉट देयर एंड सीमेंट इज अ न्यू प्रोडक्ट एंड वी प्रेजेंट वॉल्यूम्स इट्स नॉट विद सीमेंट सीमेंट इज जस्ट एटेड एज इट वाज एक्सपैंड इनटू द एलएन एनालिसिस इन वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस बाय आवर कॉल माय कोलीग संजय सरो वी डिड सम नाउ अराउंड फाइव सिक्स रेट्स ऑफ सीमेंट मूवमेंट इन बल्क बट इज एन एक्सपेक्टेड ए वेरी हाई ग्रोथ एरिया इन द प्रेजेंट वॉल्यूम्स it is not of my but a big contributor it is a very small contributor got it uh, you know so when we had uh, once said that we will try to double our domestic revenues uh, within that is cement a big part uh, who said that you are telling that or i have mentioned any time anywhere well i think you said that over a conference call i guess in the past no i did not say that i said our volume growth will continue to be at this level of 30% in domestic hmm okay hmm. so and the earlier guidance what i given the present top line of our company which used to be 80 20 to is that much 30 70 from exim and 30 from domestic we are looking to make it 60 40 in the coming years maybe in the next one or two years okay so that's not doubling of domestic uh, revenue and my second question is uh, you know rail infrastructure is actually coming up all over india not just pfc uh, so are we seeing the similar road to rail kind of market share shift outside of the northwest belt the rail infrastructure is getting better the bottlenecks are getting are being addressed so, so no new rail infrastructure like dedicated freight corridor is not at started anywhere except to be bombay delhi and delhi kolkata yeah okay let's be clear on this so because the constraints are going away from rail system we expect the transit times to be more predictable with the predictability of transit time in a much better way definitely the volumes start increasing on rail mode and the other factor is many of the mnc's now they are looking at esg as one of the main factors so for esg purpose rail transport is the best transport and conquer we are now declaring our esg parameters from last year that will also help us in you know getting more volume who are more conscious about the environment Makes sense. Uh, so, so uh, is there any uh, example that you can highlight to us where uh, you know outside of the northwest belt where there is no DFC, uh, we are gaining rail volumes over there? For your for your benefit of understanding and trying to uh, you know calculate the share prices, I can't give you. As I already told you, what is the scenario? Isn't it? Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, 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 you've shared uh, uh, data points on uh, share of uh, different ports and uh, rail coefficient. Could you also give data for the market share that you have at JNPT? Which market share you have? The market share that Concor has at JNPT, Mundra, and Pipawa. The ones that you typically give here. Yeah, JNPT actually, if we uh, take out the short term, the uh, short lead movement, then we have market share of 79 percent. Okay. Mindra, we have 40 percent. Pipawa, we have 48 percent. 48 percent. What will be the numbers, let's say, a year ago, just for comparison, since since you're giving X of short lead in JNPT, if you could share that number um, last number, year. Number uh, I don't have with me at the moment. I can tell you afterwards. Thank you. That was the only question on my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Shah from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity again, sir. I just wanted to discuss a bit on the capex outlook. So, uh, for the first half, we have spent probably close to 140 crores, what we see from the cash flow statement. So, what is the outlook for this year? Because I think we have targeted for something in the order of maybe 700 crores for this year. So second half will be obviously uh, quite better than what we have spent in first half. As you know, there is a lot of uh, 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 rolling stock procurement in pipeline, including containers and wagons, wheels. So apart from uh, many uh, depots also under completion. So uh, uh, will will be the same range of uh, last year what we spent, 
uh, maybe more than that also in uh, the second half of this FY. Sure. That's it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, thank you for the uh, follow-up. Um, what I wanted to check, uh, you know, uh, on this uh, real operating margin, you mentioned 32% operating margin. Uh, can you help us understand how you calculate that, uh, you know, in terms of uh, is it real freight revenue um, minus the uh, real freight expense? I, I don't think you heard me correctly. Real freight margin is 26.48%. And overall operating margin is 32%. Okay. Okay, I, I'll take it offline. The second clarification I just wanted, sir, uh, you know, uh, pardon me if I'm asking the same question again, but uh, given our 26 terminals, uh, you know, uh, they will be up for renewal over a period of time, and that is when we have the opportunity to extend it for 35 years, or uh, we can straight away to lock in the current uh, 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 industrial land rate. Uh, we can we can renew it uh, uh, in between. Friend, there is one very good saying: too much analysis leads to paralysis. We already told you what we wanted to do. As of now, we are waiting for the guidelines to be given by the railway. So we have given you a clear position: what business we are doing now and what LLS we are doing. And the provision in that is when it comes for renewal. It can be done either way. Even otherwise also, immediately it can be done either way. But before that, the guidelines let them come. And then we do our analysis. And whatever we decide, we'll definitely share with you. Got it, sir. Uh, just yeah, a clarification. We don't do too yeah. much of analysis. Company is doing very well. And uh, I think Star Systems are welcoming Conquer share with open hands. Okay, sir. Sir, just a clarification on this MT's cost. Uh, what is the MT cost in exam? You said 52.7 crore for the first half? Yeah, that's what, yes. yes. Uh, so that is a substantial drop in terms of MT's cost QOQ for uh, exam segment because last quarter it was 50 crores in first quarter, sir. So last year, first half was 49.4. So it is a rise of 6%. Uh, sorry, what was it in first quarter FY23, sir? First quarter it was uh, 20 20.4. 20.4. This quarter it is 32.3. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Deepika Mundra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Thanks for letting me ask a question again. Uh, just on the CapEx plan, uh, sometime back you had highlighted a pickup in CapEx, uh, you know, to uh, conform more to DFC over time. Uh, can you give us some update on those procurement plans? Our procurement plans are intact. We are adding up new rates now because of certain constraints in real sets. The rate addition has it slowed down. The program is to add 270 rates, out of that we added till now 34 rates. So 270 minus 34 is a simple automatic. You can know how many number of rates we are going to add in the next three, four years. So and containers, I already mentioned that we are trying to take the inventory of our own containers to roughly 1.5 to 2 lakhs in the next three, four years. For that, we already started the development of uh, developing manufacturing, container manufacturing in India. That's going to be a result. Uh, we are expecting the containers manufacturing in India to come to us maybe this month or next month starting, and they will be coming every month. So the CapEx plan for these rolling stock and containers and the handling equipment is intact, and that we will be starting. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priyankar Beswas from Namura Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, just uh, one question from my side. 
regarding this uh, terminal concession period of 35 years so for your terminals when does it start from because is it from april 2020 like from when this no, 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 no. was announced no, 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 no. when people are i think too much of again i am repeating my don't do too much of analysis so we are operating on these terminals right from the year 1990 89 onwards the terminals one after another they were constructed in 2006 on railway land because till then this was the only company in the sector after 2006 with the change in the policy company started acquiring its own now those terminals have been in operation from 1989 they will be progressively coming after completing the 30 years or 35 years it depends on whatever has been written in the first instance the clause is very clear the next 35 years is available for this company there is no doubt in that at what rate at present it is 6% of the market value to be risen by 7% every year i hope everyone is listening to that this so this will continue and if the guidelines come out then the company will do an analysis terminal by terminal whether to continue with this this practice or to go for the new bidding parameter of 1.5% plus percentage of the pac charges to be shared with the railways as it was explained this pac is undefined variable as of now by the railway so there is a lot of analysis is to be done without that there is no point in answering any of these questions at this moment so this whenever we decide on we will definitely come back and notify the exchangers notify all your people what we are going to do with each and every terminal which is on railway okay Okay, sir. Thank you so much. So maybe I guess once the complete policy is out, maybe then it would be a better time to ask the question. I guess. But then ask the question. We will come out when we decide. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. So Bhumika, I think this is the last question we get. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. um sir on the uh, uh, you know double handling rates for this quarter if we can just get the uh, number double stack uh, is uh, in this quarter is 963 friends and total for the half year is 2108 thank you sir so the other question was in terms of the uh, exim uh, you know the first mile last mile connectivity that we are doing which has resulted in the handling volumes going up now this service that we are offering uh, what percentage of our exim volumes is already covered or exim services would be covered and how much more is there scope to scale this up further at present we are doing around 20 25% of the volume which we are handling so good and give good result and your company expected to do well in the coming quarters and coming years thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of dam capital advisors limited that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines